Now let's take a look at layered architecture design patterns. So we're going to look at um, architecture design patterns that use layers as areas of concern to group classes and components together. Now layers, um, as you might recall, there are specific rules for layers. When you're creating a layered architecture, um, you're grouping components and classes into these areas of concern, but you also stack these areas. That's why we call them layers. So you have this stack of layers on top of each other, and the rule is uh, that a layer is only allowed to communicate with a layer directly above or a layer directly below. So based on this premise, there are a number of architectural design patterns that you can uh, pick from. Let's take a look. So the first um, pattern I'd like to discuss is the client-server pattern. The client-server pattern has only two layers. There's a client here, and there's a server here. Usually, usually there is one server, and there are many, many, many clients. An example of client-server is the web. You have a web server, a single server hosting a website, and you have many, 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 many clients. Every browser basically is a client. So that can be a smartphone, it could be uh, an iPad like this, it could be a laptop, it could be a desktop computer. There could be hundreds of people browsing your website at the same time. So websites are a classic client-server architecture. Between the clients and the server is a barrier. I've drawn it as a dotted line to highlight that uh, the client lives on one system and the server lives on another. So these two layers are deployed on uh, separate uh, systems connected by a network. And there is a formal communication between these layers. So what can we say about the client-server pattern? Uh, we have distinct clients and servers. We have uh, clients and servers separated by a network. We have a formal communication protocol that connects the client and server together. And there are many clients and usually a single server. So what are the pros and cons of the client-server pattern? So first of all, it's very secure. Um, because there's only one server, you can secure the server against intrusions. It's a tiny attack surface. It's only a single uh, node on the network. And you can uh, secure the communication protocol between the client and the server. So you only have to secure one machine and one protocol and you're done. Compare this with an architecture where the software is deployed on hundreds of different workstations. That's a massive attack surface. So client-server is very secure. The communication protocol is fairly simple. Um, it's, just, it's a protocol between a client layer and a server layer. So um, you can design this protocol up front and then make sure that all the components and classes in the client and server layer use that protocol. So it's like a single communication channel between two layers. You have centralized control over the server. To do a software upgrade, you upgrade the server, you're done. So very simple. And it's easy to manage. Again, because there's only one server, uh, management of your software becomes incredibly easy. But there are cons as well. It requires a network. So if the network uh, is slow or it drops out completely, then this whole pattern breaks down. Um, the client-server pattern is difficult to scale out um, because there's one server. You can scale up, you can make the server bigger and bigger, but it's very hard to go from one server to two servers. The server represents a single point of failure and it's hard to debug because of the network connecting the client and the server. So uh, debugging uh, an issue um, is somewhat difficult. It's hard to reproduce bugs in a client-server architecture. Okay, next pattern, the layered pattern. So a layered pattern simply groups components and classes into distinct layers. So here's a layer, here's a layer, and here's a layer, three layers. And here are communication channels between the layers. So you can see that layer 1 communicates with layer 2, and layer 2 communicates with layer 3. 
and there is no communication between layer 1 and layer 3. So to go from layer 1 to layer 3, you have to go through the middle layer. Remember, this is a rule of the layered architecture. So the layered pattern uh, provides strictly separated areas of concern, which is nice. Uh, it creates a very clean and logical architecture and it formalizes the communication. Layers can only communicate with their direct neighbors above or below. So it simplifies the communication between components in your system. So what are the pros and cons of the layered pattern? The pros are that the layered pattern provides an extremely high level of abstraction. Um, the layers communicate with each other through very formal interfaces. These are highly abstract interfaces and they allow you to swap out entire layers and replace them with different implementations without the other layers noticing. So you could take a data layer, remove it, replace it with an entirely different data layer, say to communicate with a different type of database, and all the layers on top won't notice the difference. So that's really useful. It makes your architecture extremely flexible. It offers high isolation. The layers are strictly isolated from each other. So the components that live in, um, in the layers are very strictly separated from the components in other layers. So this really simplifies communication patterns between components. Which is the third point. The communication is extremely structured in this pattern. And the fourth pro is it's very easy to scale out. If you want to improve the performance of your system, you will make the layer wider. You add more objects. Um, you can even spread out a layer over multiple servers. Um, so the layered ar architecture kind of, um, uh, it's, it's already kind of a distributed architecture. Normally all the layers live on a single server, but it's very easy to um, take layers and deploy them on different servers and scale your system that way. So um, contrast this with client server, which only offered you a scale up, making the server bigger, more powerful. The layered architecture offers you scale out, where you scale over more servers. Now the cons. The layered architecture offers very deep call chains. To call a data component from the presentation layer, consider the presentation component calls a business component, the business component calls a data component, and the data component calls into a database. So that's three hops already. Um, if you have presentation components calling each other and then calling business components which call each other and then go into data, um, you could easily have call chains uh, 20 or 30 calls deep. So you get this huge stack traces, you get these large uh, nested calls on the stack. Um, it's not really a problem, I mean .NET can easily handle that, but it makes debugging a bit difficult. It can hide complexity. Um, it's quite possible that in the lowest layer there is a very complicated feature, a very, um, yeah, very complex feature, and you don't notice it because you never call it directly. You call a layer that calls a layer that calls a layer that calls the feature. So um, it's possible that you have uh, hidden complexity in your architecture, like a, um, a component that does lots of complicated stuff and it's not apparent because it's so far away from the initial component making the call. So the layered architecture hides complexity and that can be a bad thing. The layered architecture may harm performance. Um, for example, if you have a data layer, um, I'll give you an example Yeah, You have a data layer that can um, extract one record from a table. And then you have a business component that wants the entire table. But the data interface only provides a single record access. So the business component has a loop and it simply loops through the entire table, makes a call into the data layer for every object. So now if you go up a level to the presentation layer, you ask for the complete table and you get a table back of 200 records and everything looks fine. But on the data level, these were 200 individual calls made from the business level. So this is very um, bad in terms of performance. If you want block data from a database, you should just ask for the entire table and not loop through a data function that calls a single record. 
but these bugs very easily sneak into the layered architecture um, because of the abstraction. Uh, the data layer uh, provides a highly abstract interface to the business layer, so any performance bottlenecks will not immediately become apparent. And the higher up you are in the stack of layers, the less clear it becomes where the bottlenecks are and where they're not. So not only does this architecture hide complexity, it also hides performance, performance bottlenecks. And finally, the lowest layer must be able to cover all use cases. So again, the data um, layer, the data component is a good example. If I have a data component that provides a single object, a single record from a table, then that probably will not be enough because there will probably be a business component somewhere in another layer that wants an entire table. So the data layer also needs an, another interface that can provide an entire table. And this process continues. The data layer needs to have lots and lots and lots of separate interfaces for every conceivable use case. Um, so it needs to cover all the required use cases. The data layer needs to be super flexible and that's difficult to design. Finally, the N-tier pattern. The N-tier pattern is actually the same as the layered pattern, but now all the layers are on separate servers. So tier 1 is on one server, tier 2 is on another server, and tier 3 is on another server. So you can see this is basically the same diagram as the layered architecture, but now I've drawn these network boundaries between the layers. So what does that mean? It means the communication between the layers uses a network. Very important. So what are the consequences of that? First the pros. The pros are high abstraction, high isolation, structured communication and easy to scale out. Basically the same uh, pros as the layered architecture. But the cons are the network is now a single point of failure. When the network goes down, this whole architecture stops working. The network also might be slow. The layered architecture it kind of uh, hinges on the fact that calls between layers are super fast. If you route them over a network and the network is congested, then your entire system can slow to a crawl. Um, and with an N-tier architecture, you really need to think about what you're going to do because the network will be unreliable. The interfaces will have to be coarse because of the slow network. You can't have fine-grained functionality in a layer being called from another layer. You want to minimize the number of calls between layers because they go over a network. So you can only have coarse interfaces. And finally, it's hard to debug. Any um, architecture that is distributed over multiple servers and makes calls over a network is difficult to debug. It's hard to simulate and test uh, failure scenarios and debug them. Okay, so we talked about layered architectures. So these were three layered architectures. We talked about client-server, we talked about the layered architecture, and we talked about the N-tier architecture. Three architectural design patterns that use stacked layers.